So yesterday we improved upon this application by uh, utilizing as many Tornado FX features we possibly could. But there was one thing missing. If you remember, whenever you press the refresh button, you will get this progress bar and the text at the bottom. Uh, so this text and progress bar will be visible as long as the remoting call is, is active. And uh, to, to do this, we had to manually create a task, implement the call function, and then in succeed, do whatever we wanted to with the data we got from the call function. Uh, we also had to, uh, to uh, maintain three properties for the running progress and message state of this task object. The reason we had to do this is that uh, the run async function of tornado effects, which we would use, usually uh, use, uh, didn't support calling update message and update progress because it didn't run in the context of a task. So you had no way to access those methods. We've changed that now and we've also added some, uh, some extra support to make it easier to uh, uh, bind to the state of a uh, running task. So let's try to uh, utilize this new pattern to improve our application. So first of all, we can go back to using run async. And instead of implementing call, we will just put our code inside run async. Instead of uh, implementing succeeded, we will add the UI call to say that we want to, uh, to run this code on the UI thread once the run async method is done and it has given us uh, our data. So we can remove this task now. Also, we don't need to, to execute or start the task manually anymore. It's done automatically for us. The problem we now face is that uh, uh, we can't bind to this, uh, this, uh, these properties of the task. Of course, we could by uh, saying that uh, T is run async like this, and we would be golden. But we don't want to stop there. Uh, this is still uh, some boilerplate code, so we will remove all these. We'll also remove all of these, and instead we will add a task status object here. This task status object comes with tornado effects. Let's instantiate it for now, and let's say that this run async call should update this specific task status object. Inside the status object, we will find the properties that we've removed earlier. So the first thing we need to do is uh, go to where those properties are used. They used to be directly in the customer view model, but now they will be in our task status object instead. It's not called task progress, it's just progress. Also here, task status message and task status running. So. Already this helps a lot. And let's uh, first of all, see that it still works. So let's rerun the application. Great, same functionality, a lot less code, but we can do even better. This task status object, if we have a look at it, it's actually an item view model and it binds towards uh, the properties of whatever task is uh, currently active within it. Uh, it does some ugly things that you normally don't need to do uh, in your application code. So let's not dwell on that. But the, what you can see is that it, it exposes these four properties and it can also contain a task. So let's go back. And uh, uh, since, well, actually, that's one more thing I wanted to show you. Since it, it is an item view model, it's injectable. And uh, if you have a look at the uh, the function call uh, for run async, you will see that it takes this status object that we passed in, but if you don't pass in an object, it will actually look it up in the current scope. So that means if you don't pass an object in here, you will get one uh, task status scoped to your current scope, so it will uh, be a singleton within that scope. And that is actually fine for us in this case. So let's just remove this parameter. Let's also remove it from here. Let's go back up to, to here and remove this customer view model because we don't need it anymore in here. Instead, we will add task status, but we can't just instantiate it here. We, we need to use the same version that the uh, run async call below will use. So we will say task status by inject instead. We can actually call it status, I think. And now we will 
extract the properties from that status object instead. So this is really beginning to look like something. Let's rerun. Still the same functionality, even less code. So I hope you like this and uh, that you would like to, to use the same pattern in your own applications whenever you need access to, to the status of a, a long running task. Thanks for watching.